So my name is Yanni Gambros. I'm the head of uh, business development for QCWare. Thank you all for coming. Um, and what I'm going to do just in the next uh, five or ten minutes here is just basically present uh, QCWare and, and what we do. Right. So um, the first thing, as head of business development, that uh, everybody always asks me, even you know, conversationally uh, or off work, is okay. Well, you know, why invest in this technology? Why do it now? What is the uh, potential uh, payback, right? And really, the, uh, there is a very simple answer that I think we need to just be able to uh, just say conversationally. Uh, maybe you can share it with your uh, manager or, uh, or boss. And, uh, and the answer is really, uh, it is more about insuring yourself against the potential disruption event, right? So you have insurance for your car, you have insurance for your home. Uh, this is a great way to ensure basically your data science uh, business, right? Because uh, it can potentially be very disruptive what quantum computing can bring into the data science world, into all these different applications like optimization, uh, machine learning, and uh, simulation. Uh, so that's really it, right? So if you want to explain to someone why uh, they need to have an interest in quantum computing, uh, this is it. And some of the presentations that we're going to be doing later today are going to stress this and actually, I just want to highlight Randy's presentation. Uh, he's going to be talking about um, uh, best practices and how to get started essentially building this insurance policy, how to get started essentially getting some friction with the technology, getting access to the technology, and getting some skills for your people, because it's all about the skills that your people internally will need uh, to actually make use of this. So uh, the big thing that we do as QCWare is really build a software platform. That's really our mission. And the software platform, the easiest way to explain it is that it's a data science platform that runs on quantum computing hardware, right? So you want to solve your optimization problems. You want to solve your machine learning problems. You want to solve your simulation problems. This is the platform that you can use to do that on quantum uh, computers. And um, you, we believe that you should not be a quantum expert, really, to take advantage and harness the power of quantum computing. So this is the service that we're putting together for you, and it's going to be made generally available sometime in 2019. We're building this high-level APIs, one for simulation, one for optimization, and one for machine learning that a classically trained data scientist can access very easily in, um, in Python for right now. And then we basically take care of the rest, right? So we do the quantum algorithms under the hood. We do the actual integrations to the hardware. And we take your problem uh, as you formulated it. And then we run the quantum algorithms on the, um, on the hardware of your choice. And then we pass back the result, right? So that's the key value proposition. That's number one um, value proposition is accessibility to just um, making sure that everybody, even if they're classically trained, if they're not a quantum physicist can actually access the software and can actually harness the power of quantum computing. The other thing is just getting access right, to quantum computing hardware. Uh, currently, uh, there are some um, um, hardware platforms available. We already connected to those. And we're going to be connected to uh, some of the other hardware platforms, actually, uh, very soon, as soon as they're uh, made available and we work out all the partnership. But it basically, that's uh, another key proposition. Instead of you going to the, all these different hardware vendors, trying to get access from each and every one, or trying to keep up with potential updates and um, um, and all the different versions they're going to be releasing, you can come to us. You uh, consume this quantum computing time. That's what's on the green uh, cylinder in the, uh, on the top. And then you can actually use that quantum computing time and actually use it on each one of the hardware platforms that we're connected to. So the other thing we're doing right now, even though we are a software company, but we want to help people essentially start getting access into quantum computing uh, projects, getting uh, access to education, and getting some friction with the technology, right? So we're also offering some services to help people get started. So the first thing we do, and I think Randy is going to talk um, a lot more about this. This is going to be, uh, this is our best practice that we've um, figure out works really well with large enterprises and we've already used with many of our customers is to offer basically this uh, educational and business workshops, right? So these are not just technical workshops. These are also meant for your business user 
to discuss um, use cases, to figure out what is the right set of requirements, and then to pick maybe one or two uh, near-term uh, projects that we can then move forward with. And that's basically the second step. The second step is to get even more friction with the technology and to do some uh, initial prototype, right? To see what kind of a problem we can actually solve on the existing hardware, actually solve that problem, model it and solve it, see what kind of results we get, see uh, you know, the effects of noise, uh, see what, um, um, what is the gap to potential speed up, what is the gap from our classical baseline, and, um, and have a much more detailed discussion basically on a specific problem. You know, as you probably all know, the devil is always in the details with these, with these um, projects. And finally, for those that are interested in, in something even more, in kind of a higher goal, which is to really figure out what are the speed ups, the potential speed ups that uh, we can figure out together, right? Um, we have obviously, as Matt said, um, a world leading team. Uh, and um, we, we partner with some organizations to really figure out, okay, how do we make things uh, just go faster? How do we figure out speed ups for certain problems and for certain algorithms? So we're happy to do that as well. Obviously, that's a much more mature uh, objective than the other two. So just want to highlight now, again, as Matt said, I think the key uh, differentiator for QCWare uh, is essentially the quality of the team members and what the team brings um, uh, basically to, to the community. We have uh, some of the world's leading experts uh, in quantum algorithms, information theory, um, and hardware. And, um, and that's really the key differentiation because our, our objective for the team is to make sure that they can discover new speedups and they can put them into the software platform for you to use. So I'm just going to highlight very quickly, uh, we couldn't obviously put everyone up there, but I just want to highlight Scott Aronson, who's our chief technical advisor that's working on exactly figuring out um, what are uh, the complexity of current algorithms and new algorithms and can we prove, provably say we have speed ups in uh, certain domains. Yordanis Karanidis, who's going to be leading our um, office in Europe very soon. Uh, Wim Van Dam and Matt Kudron, all these guys, I just highlighted some of their recent papers that um, uh, basically uh, try to prove and, and figure out this uh, this new algorithms really that are going to lead the way with speed ups. Uh, the other thing I wanted to highlight is that we are um, a board member of QEDC, right? This is the um, a, a consortium for economic development, for quantum economic development. Uh, for those of you that are from Europe, this is the equivalent to the EU uh, quantum flagship program. So we're very excited to be working very closely with the uh, QEDC, and we're looking forward basically to collaborating with all the other members uh, to make sure the quantum community can move forward. And as Matt said, so he, he stole my thunder there in terms of the offices, um, but we are uh, opening up this new office in Paris. We're really excited about that, and that's going to serve our um, customers, obviously, uh, in Europe. And um, that's all I had. Any questions? Do we have the mics uh, somewhere? Or? OK. Anybody? Yeah, Nathan. Just a second here. Let's uh, let's wait for the mic. Thanks. So, so in a sense, you're offering a front-end consulting service, the interface between the problem and the technology. Sort of, I think that Matt once described as what Oracle did for database 30 years ago. Well, yeah, I think the uh, we are offering services right now just because we think the the market is is very early stage. People don't really know how to um, uh, how to use the technology, how to use the algorithms. So we're offering the service in conjunction, basically, with a software platform to just get people started, right? To really sit down with them, understand their problem, figure out which use cases, and educate them on which use cases this machine are going to be more applicable near term versus more medium term or long term. And each of those engagements are, are constructed on a case-by-case on -case basis, right? Obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're definitely custom engagements for the specific industry, for the specific use cases that uh, you want to uh, work on. Yes. Okay, thanks. Sure. Thank you.